Okay, well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Today's presentation is brought to you by the Transportation Learning Network. TLN is a program of the Upper Great Plains Transportation Institute at North Dakota State University and is a partnership with the four state DOTs of North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, and Wyoming, and the Mountain Plains Consortium, which includes eight universities in Colorado, North Dakota, South Dakota, Utah, and Wyoming. Our speaker today is we have uh, Dr. Yang. He is an assistant professor in the Department of Civil Engineering and Envir Environmental Engineering at Utah University of Utah. His research focuses on traffic operations under connected automated vehicle environment, machine learning application and transportation, traffic flow modeling, traffic signal control, freeway traffic operations, and traffic safety. Terry is the associate editor of ASCE Journal of Urban Planning and Development and IEEE Open Journal of Intelligent Transportation, the handling editor of Transportation Research Board, the vice chair of INFORM's SIG Intelligent Transportation Systems, and the member of two TRB standing committees. His research is funded by the US DOT, the Utah DOT, Federal Highway Administration, and the National Science Foundation, which results in over 100 published papers in journals and conferences. With that, Terry, I will turn the presentation over to you. Yeah, thank you so much, Chris, and uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, oops, sorry. Um, so um, uh, today I would like to present some uh, research results from the uh, the MPC project and the topic of my presentation today mainly focus on the a discussion of the impact of connecting automated vehicles on the traffic safety and efficiency. And we are uh, uh, actually we, we have a little bit more information go beyond the, the project uh, MPC project uh, scope because uh, we have uh, uh, quite a few uh, similar uh, concept uh, has been funded across uh, different agencies. So 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 here uh, the, the material we we. we we covered today uh, is actually a, a little bit uh, uh, beyond the, the scope uh, in, in the MPC project. Um, all right, so um, this is the outline of the presentation today. Uh, uh, firstly, I would like to introduce some uh, background and so then include some uh, data collection in terms of the uh, traffic operation and traffic control under the connected automated vehicle environment. So then the next component would be uh, to the discussion of the uh, safety impact, safety impact, uh, uh, along with some road geometric design features, and then uh, I would introduce a dynamic signal control concept we uh, proposed, um, and and also along with a smart traffic signal control uh, scenario, um, along with some simulation result in, in that part. So then there's a, a, a little bit more discussion in terms of the the government role in 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 the era of uh, connected automated vehicles or smart mobility systems. Um, so uh, this is actually the uh, 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 idea condition, or uh, or the, the 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 fully autonomous vehicle we, we want to achieve in, in the future. So in, imagine uh, when we have the uh, the level five uh, connected auto autonomous vehicles. So then uh, we can completely remove the driver from the car, and then you can uh, in in the morning when you get into into the car, you can uh, you can just maybe. Do the, do the one button push, you select your destination, and then you, you push the start, then you can just enjoy your life in the vehicle. You can do whatever you want. You can maybe have a meeting, you can, have, you can watch a movie, or you can even have a sleep in the car. So that is the ultimate goal of developing the, uh, the smart vehicle technologies. But uh, later on, as we uh, uh, start, start to introduce those concepts, uh, we, we will realize that the, the achievement of this kind of a level five, fully autonomous, autonomous vehicles, uh, that will require the collaboration uh, uh, of both connected vehicle technology and vehicle automation technology. Um, so first, let's start with the, the connected vehicle uh, 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 background. So the connected vehicle refers to we are using the, uh, uh, the communication technologies to facilitate the, 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 the talking or communication between vehicles and infrastructures. So, so now this, there's a uh, uh, in, in research and also in application, there's a, a couple of uh, a connectivity technology that have been used in in in, in, in the connected vehicle environment, uh, so including the DSRC and CV2X, the so 5G DMB. But here, I I I, I kind of crossed out uh, uh, the the DSRC because uh, later we're going to explain uh, uh, why is that is because the the DSRC has been uh, um, uh, eliminated from this uh, technology because they 
the DSRC has the same com communication channel with the CV2X. There's a competition between these two. And, 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 and actually, last uh, October, I think FCC announced that uh, CV2X won the competition, and, and, and now DSR, DSRC is not, a way, uh, it's not a good choice for the connected vehicle technologies. But we're going to uh, provide more detailed information later. Um, so um, with the support of the connected uh, vehicle technology, we can have the different uh, communication channels. We can have the V2V, uh, vehicle to vehicle communication. We can have the V2I, uh, V2 to infrastructure. We can even have the uh, vehicle to in vehicle to pedestrians, so and so forth. Um, so, so the the second uh, background is related to the automated or autonomous vehicles. Uh, I think uh, uh, maybe most of you have 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 been familiar with this. Uh, uh, these six levels of vehicle de automation definitions by SA SAE. And, uh, but I will maybe just quickly go over uh, the table here and, and just in case some of you may not have a good background on that. So uh, in terms of the uh, level of vehicle automation, uh, we can classify that into the six levels starting from level zero to uh, level five. And here the level zero means we have, we have zero, we have, we have nothing. And, uh, uh, so basically, the, the human drivers performs everything in the vehicle, and then starting from level one, we 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 start to have some automation control, uh, uh, maybe just one vehicle function, and usually we call it uh, driver assistance. So some examples include the adaptive cruise control and and lane keeping assistance. So the, those are the, the the level one, and and now this I believe uh, many luxury car they, they they already have the adaptive cruise control and and, and lane keeping. Uh, functions so those belongs to the level one and um, so level two is the partial automation and so the automation control both uh, steering and speed and driver response for monitoring and immediate uh, immediate re re engagement so so you already the, we see the the Tesla uh, uh, autopilot it, uh, is, is considered as one of the level two and level three is the conditional automation and um, so, so starting from level level three, we 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 start to use the uh, the the automated driving system ADS to control the car, and and here the automation control both steering and speed and the monitoring environment, and driver may may be notified uh, uh, to to re, re, re engage. <clears throat> so the the main difference between uh, uh, level two and level three is uh, uh, level three cars have more capabilities to to control the car. So for example, the car can do uh, automatic uh, left turning, right turning. So and so forth, but still, we <coughs> uh, for the for the level three, we still require the the driver will be on board, and uh, uh, in most cases, we still require the driver to put both 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 of their hands on the, on the wheel just in case to uh, any emergencies. And starting from level four, um, we can completely remove the uh, the driver from the car, and then the car becomes a driverless car. Or uh, usually, we start to call the car as the autonomous vehicles. So from uh, uh, le for level three, we usually call it automated vehicles, but starting from level four, we start to call the vehicles autonomous vehicles. So autonomous vehicles, we, we don't have the driver on board, but for the level four, uh, we usually operate the car uh, in a closed environment. And, and so the scenario will be we have to predefine the routing of the, of the car, and usually the car will be driving at the lower speed as well, for example, uh, uh, 20 miles per hour, 25 miles per hour. And, 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 and those are the level four. And, and then the level five is the ultimate goal, is the fully automation, as we just showed in, in, in the photo. So we have everything on board, and, and the driver uh, can just get into the car, set, set up the destination, and push one button. Then they can, the driver will be uh, able to pick the best routing and, and, and then do the, all the maneuvers, and, 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 the, and the driver can just do whatever they want in, in the car. So that is the ultimate goal of the, of the, of the uh, level five. So in, in, in terms of the technology development and also including the field demonstration. Nowadays, uh, there's a, a level three is, is kind of mature, even though there's a still some ongoing uh, project funded by different agencies, uh, uh, including those car companies. They, they still put a lot of efforts on the level three, but uh, the technology is pretty mature uh, right now, um, even though there's uh, still some, some uh, unsolved issues. Um, and also in terms of level four, uh, there is al already a couple of companies uh, such as Easy Mouse, so they have the the, the level four uh, autonomous shuttles uh, available, and 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 in the state of Utah, um, 
the the Utah Department of Translation, they they actually do some uh, uh, level four uh, Thomas Shuttle dem demonstration in our uh, University of Utah campus uh, back to I think uh, uh, October of 2000, uh, 2019. Uh, so those are uh, already uh, being uh, testing in field, but uh, we are still uh, I think uh, a, a little bit far away from the level five. So they were I, I, from from my perspective, I'm expecting another maybe at least ten years to reach the level five. Um, so uh, with the uh, integration of the uh, connected vehicle technology and the vehicle automation technology, and uh, so that refers to uh, the CAV, uh, uh, which stands for the connected automated vehicle or a, stand, uh, a connected autonomous vehicle. It depends on the level of vehicle automation we have been integrating with the connected vehicle, connectivity technology. So. Uh, uh, a quick question here is why we want to do the integration of these two technology because this uh, this seems one focus on the communication side, the others focus on the big automation side. It's, um, so, so the main reason is because um, uh, in some cases, if you are just using the uh, the vehicle automation uh, vehicle automation uh, function, so. Uh, uh, because in, in most uh, uh, automated vehicle or autonomous vehicles, we're using the onboard sensors to detect the driving environment. So in that case, uh, for example, when you have a, a connected uh, automated vehicle or autonomous vehicle get approached into an intersection, so you have to use uh, maybe the onboard camera to look at uh, the color of the traffic signal light. So then you could decide uh, when to stop or when to uh, speed up to, to pass the intersection. So in this case, we, 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 the best we can do for the autonomous vehicle is to mimic the, the behavior of the, the of the drive, of the of the human drivers. But uh, 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 but in this case, we can just do the reactive control. So we detect the environment. So then we take the reaction. Uh, but with integration of the connected vehicle technology, so we can use the onboard communication device. So then uh, through the, uh, the the for example through the vehicle to infrastructure communication, we can get uh, the traffic signal uh, traffic signal light status in advance. So for example, the vehicle will receive the, uh, the, the SPAT information, uh, which, which is telling that uh, uh, the, the, after maybe five seconds, the, the signal will turn from uh, green to red, and you're too far away from the intersection, please slow down. So the, in that case, with, with those information from the communication device, so with, then we can do the, 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 the pre um, uh, planning, or we can do the proactive control. So then we can do the control in a, a, a ahead of the act, uh, occurrence of the incident. So so then uh, that is the benefit of, of integrating the uh, connectivity technology with the vehicle automation because with integration we can do the proactive control. Otherwise, you can do just do the reactive control, right? So here, uh, uh, in terms of CV, the connectivity con connectivity technology allows us to exchange the traffic information between the vehicle and the infrastructure. And the vehicle uh, uh, automated driving system, uh, usually we call it ADS, uh, starting from the, the, the level three. Uh, so the ADS will control the vehicle trajectory uh, based on the real-time information uh, that collected from onboard uh, sensors and, and also the, the CV communications. So nowadays, in terms of the onboard sensors for uh, automated vehicles or autonomous vehicles, so there are Actually, two. Uh, uh, despite there's many different uh, sensors, but two of them are most popular sensor. One is the the lidar sensor. The other is the camera sensors. So, so usually the lidar sensor is more expensive, but can provide more accurate information. And the camera sensor is much much cheaper. And uh, but 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 uh, we can we can easily imagine there's a lot of deficiency of camera sensors because you may. Uh, the, 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 the accuracy of the camera sensor may be affected by maybe a light condition or the, uh, the weather condition as well. Um, so, uh, but um, is for, for some um, um, uh, automated vehicles um, uh, uh, on the market, for example, the Tesla, they, they actually, they, they, uh, uh, they mainly focus on the camera sensors because they want to uh, provide a car that is aff affordable for, for most users. Uh, um, but in terms of the lidar sensor, especially the the high high resolution lidar sensor, they're they're quite expensive. So um, I have a couple of colleagues, and, um, and, and including myself, we are trying to assemble a, a, a connected a connected automated vehicle by ourselves and using the lidar sensor. And and the the cost is about um, 
300k to 400k per per vehicle uh, currently, and so so, so those those vehicles are definitely very expensive, and so that's why uh, um, uh, many industry uh, industry they, they put emphasis on the on the uh, uh, camera sensors. Uh, um, so uh, now I would like to uh, move to some uh, uh, background introduction in terms of the data collection using different type of technologies on the connected automated vehicles. Um, so in terms of the uh, uh, data collection through the communication. So at present, there are two very different technology enabling the V2X communication. Uh, so DSRC stands for the dedicated short range communication, and it is also called ITS G5 in Europe. So in, in, the, U, in the US, DSRC is contained in the 75 amherz segment of the 5.9 uh, uh, GHz band, and it is often used for direct communication in a local environment. So for example, you can, you can think about the DSRC as a type of Wi-Fi. So that is a, just a, it's actually a communication in the, in a, in a local environment. So, so the DSRC and the Wi-Fi, they are very similar uh, technologies. And at the same time, we have the, the CV2X. So CV2X stands for the cellular V2X, and it utilizes the cellular technology to provide a link between the vehicles and the rest of the world, including other vehicles and the traffic control system. So actually, um, uh, these two technologies, they're uh, not compatible with each other uh, because they are using the, the same communication channel. So there's al always a, a competition uh, between these uh, two technologies. In, in, I think back to, uh, during the past uh, uh, five years. Um, so uh, I think uh, before uh, uh, last October, uh, 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 nobody know uh, uh, which uh, technology should be used to uh, to support the connected vehicle technology. So, uh, so that's why, uh, for example, even for the for the government agencies such as the UDOT, uh, when they start to invest the money to install the the communication infrastructure on, on, on the roadside to to communicate with connected vehicles, so they they so, so in, they invest about uh, half budget for DSRC, half budget for CV2X. So then uh, during the, the, the real-time operation, if you turn on the DSRC, you have to turn off the CV2X. If you turn on the CV, CV2X, you have to turn, turn off the DSRC because they're not compatible with, it, with, with each other and they're using the same communication channel. So in the, in the midst of the plat war, uh, so engineers must choose which platform to commit their development time and, and cost to. And there's always dilemma to, uh, to choose e either one of the one of these two technologies, uh, but uh, right now, because of the announcement made by the FCC last October, uh, right now the CB2X won the competition, and 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 from from this starting from this year, we can we, we can observe uh, many agencies and, and industry agent uh, government agency and and also the research institutions they completely switch their uh, efforts to CB2X because right now the. Uh, the, 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 the this technology wants computation and, and nobody's going to use the DSRC for connected vehicle in the future. Um, so in terms of the data collection, uh, so there's always some challenges over here. Uh, so that refers to the communication jam or communication uh, congestion. So the com communication network is quite similar to our uh, transmission network. So, so when we have a lot of uh, data to transmit from one uh, one unit to another. So then that will contribute some traffic on the communication network. So that can also cause some uh, uh, communication jam or communication congestion problems. So uh, so nowadays we have pretty low connected vehicle uh, penetration rate uh, on the roadway because uh, the majority of the connected vehicle testing are just for demonstration purpose. We don't really have too many um, uh, commercial con connected vehicles uh, in the traffic, but imagine in the future, if we have all vehicles on the road are either connected vehicles or connected automated vehicles, so then we have to um, de design a communication net network that will be able to facilitate the communication needs of each individual CV or CVs. So in that case, uh, there will definitely cause a lot of communication traffic and there can cause the corresponding communication congestion or communication jam. So in that case, uh, imagine uh, if we, if our network would not be able to provide the same level of service to all the vehicles. So some communication priorities may be uh, given to CVs because for the CV we don't have the 
the vehicle automation function on board. So we can just provide some advisory information to uh, to the drivers. So in that case, maybe you can uh, uh, do the communication every uh, maybe every uh, five seconds or every ten seconds, and to 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 lower the communication rate or communication frequency. So then we can re reduce the communication load on the network. But for the CVs, because we have the vehicle automation uh, function on board, we have to use the ADS, the automated driving system, to uh, to do the vehicle automation control. So in that case, we have to facilitate more, uh, much higher um, uh, communication frequency. So for example, every half second or every 0.1 second, we, we want to deliver the information to the CVs to facilitate the, the, the planning or, or the control of the vehicle trajectories. So uh, in, 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 in our developed uh, system, we actually do the uh, communication uh, uh, a network optimization uh, with a collaboration with uh, with one professor in the in the ECE department, the electric electrical engineering department. So we are designing a, a, a optimal communication network that provide some communication priorities to CVs. So in our uh, system, we have the communication provided to the CV every half seconds, but uh, for the so the connected vehicles only, we provide the communication every. Uh, two, 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 two seconds or three seconds. Um, okay, so uh, now with, with, with those of background, I would, I would like to spend some time on the discussion of the uh, CV uh, safety impact uh, along with some uh, road geometric design features. Um, so the, so uh, here, um, there's a two quick questions I, I would like to answer in, in this part. The first one is the, how the CV uh, safety performance is related to the road geometry design features. And the second one is what are the scenarios that CV may benefit uh, in improving the road safety. And uh, now let's take a look at the first scenario. So the first scenario is related to the lane uh, changing warning. So for example, for some uh, work zones or bottlenecks or uh, lane closures due to the incident, uh, uh, because we are expecting the the drivers to make a, make a lane change, and also we're expecting the the the, the traffic a bottleneck or traffic congestion at, at in those uh, lane closure area. So then we want to give some early warning for the drivers to make the lane changing because if if you have everybody to make a lane change at the last minute, so then uh, you can cause a lot of uh, traffic waving in the bottleneck area, so as soon as to further reduce the speed speed in the bottleneck area. So uh, with with the the support of the connected vehicle technology, we can provide some early warnings for the drivers uh, through the, the, the infrastructure to vehicle communication uh, using the roadside uh, communication unit or roadside communication equipment to uh, give the early warning for the drivers. So then we can uh, 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 inform the connected vehicles to make uh, earlier uh, lane changing to avoid the last minute legend behaviors in the reduced speed area. So then in this case, we can have some benefit in decreasing uh, vehicle conflicts and site collision as well, in, uh, uh, just ahead of the bottleneck area. So also we can, uh, with the, the, the slowdown of the, of the driver's speed, we can also reduce the worker's injury uh, risk in the, in the work zone area. And the second scenario is about the, uh, the, the red light uh, warning. So we actually, uh, send send alert to uh, uh, to the driver uh, approaching intersections, uh, especially when we have the low visibility. So this is one of the scenario we we, we just mentioned before, uh, a few minutes before. And uh, with we if we just have the vehicle automation function, you just use the the vehicle, uh, vehicle on board camera to look at the driver signal light. So in some cases, in some cases, especially with a bad weather condition, so your camera will not be able to observe. Uh, the, the traffic signal light status. Um, uh, so in, in that case, uh, that can pose some potential risk to the to the uh, automated vehicle or autonomous vehicles. But if we can have the uh, the connected vehicle technology on board, we can provide a red light warning. So we can send alert to the driver, uh, get approaching to the intersection. So then we can prepare the driver or the ADS for the intersection to reduce the speed. And the next scenario is the adverse driving condition warning. So uh, under, in, in many states of, uh, of, of the U.S., um, uh, uh, probably there will be maybe three months or even half 
a half year of winter uh, weather uh, in, in those areas. So the weather data of the downstream road or the road condition can be also shared with the, the connected vehicles uh, in terms of this, those, this type of adverse driving condition warning. So then we can provide some speed alert in case of the low visibility of a science and also some uh, that would be uh, this, kind of, this kind of control will be suitable for the, the curvy uh, roads as well. So this actually is similar to some uh, variable speed limit control concept, uh, but in some cases because of the lower visibility of those uh, variable speed limit signs, so it would be always good to have the vehicle or have the infrastructure to vehicle communication to provide information to the connected vehicles through the communication because the communication uh, capability will not be affected by uh, the weather condition, but the visibility can be affected by the weather condition. So, so that is one case. Well, another scenario we can uh, we can provide uh, 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 the, the uh, adverse driving condition warning to the connected vehicles. And uh, this is uh, also some uh, ongoing work uh, funded by another federal highway pro project. So in, in this project, uh, it's quite related to what we're doing for this MPC project. Um, so so uh, here we, we are trying to use the, the dual sensory, including the roadside camera sensors and also uh, imagery, uh, uh, ima imagery based uh, infrared camera to uh, actually try to evaluate the, the pavement condition on the roadway. So uh, so the basic logic is we, we, define, we, we, we use both cameras to capture the, the uh, the pavement pavement conditions to identify the potential maybe uh, a snow or ice on, on the pavement. So then we can classify the pavement condition into different category, including dry dry pavement, or wet pavement, uh, the pavement with with snow, the pavement with ice, the pavement with compact compact uh, uh, snow. So then, because under different uh, pavement slippery condition, we can have different. Uh, uh, friction factors. So then we can uh, use the the roadside computational unit to, to into facilitate some uh, edge computing units to to uh, model the uh, the forces that has been acted uh, has been act on the acted on the on, on the vehicles. So then we can evaluate the uh, the the the, the, safe, uh, so the 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 safety of the of the vehicles and 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 because the safety of the vehicle under this kind of uh, ice and snow pattern on the pavement will be also related to the, the speed of the vehicle. So with the, those kind of uh, a vehicle dynamic model, we can actually uh, estimate what would be the safe, uh, 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 the highest the safe speed for the vehicles, probably uh, 70 miles per hour or uh, 40 miles per hour. So then we can share that information to, uh, 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 to the connected vehicles. Because uh, in, in, in those kind of a, 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 a roadway, the speed limit could be maybe uh, 50 or 60 miles per hour. But with those uh, 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 ice or snow patterns on the pavement, the safe speed can be significantly reduced to maybe 20 miles per hour or 25 miles per hour. But those information are uh, typically hard to uh, estimate it uh, in practice and in, in, in many uh, 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 real-world applications. Uh, actually, the DOT people, they uh, they, they, they try to estimate the safe, uh, safe travel speed based on engineering judgment. But, but with this technology, we can actually do the more accurate estimation to provide the guidance to the, uh, to, to, to the connected vehicle or connected automated vehicles. Uh, the next scenario is the, the RAM notice. So for some uh, 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 cases, we may have the freeway with a short exit RAM lane. So in, in that case, uh, because we have pretty short deceleration lane for the uh, uh, for the vehicles to take the, the exit. So we, we would like to uh, use connected vehicle to alert the driver to change the lane uh, in, a, in a suitable time before the reaching the, the ramp. Because if, if you have the all the vehicles trying to make the lane changing in the last minute, so then you you're gonna cause a lot of uh, uh, traffic weaving in, in this uh, area. So then that can also cause a, a, a cause an operation bottleneck on the freeway. So this kind of a uh, uh, ramp notice through the connected vehicle technology can also provide a lower crash rate due to the lane changing and and also higher a uh, lower travel time uh, in many cases. Um, so those results has also been approved by some sim simulation uh, simulation uh, scenarios. But but currently there's not too much um, 
uh, uh, field, uh, 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 field tests in, in, in real world, uh, uh, most uh, conclusion has been made by, by simulations. Uh, the next one is the active school zone notice. So that is based on the activation of the school zone, and we can send alerts to, to, to reduce speed for the connected vehicles. And so in practice, many studies uh, has observed a phenomenon that uh, some driver um, actually uh, uh, still want to reduce the speed, even though the, 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 the school zone is not activated. Uh, even for myself, when I was driving, I, I saw a, a speed limit to 20 miles per hour on some roadway for the school, for the school zone control, uh, even though that, that speed uh, uh, is, is not, uh, uh, that, that uh, 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 school zone is not activated, I, I still intend to reduce my speed. But with this kind of connecting vehicle technology, we can try to avoid unnecessary speed reduction uh, in de deactivate the, the school, school zone times. I do have one question for you or, or uh, maybe a suggestion. Uh, on scenario one, you talked the lane change warning. And so mm -hmm. for a lane change reduction, uh, would it be possible to have CAVs be able to ex execute a zipper merge to reduce those delays? Uh, yes, that, that could be, that, that would definitely be possible because for the CAV, we'll be able to do the fully trajectory control, trajectory control. So that means we can do the uh, speed control, we can do the lane changing uh, control as well. So we can definitely execute the, the zipper merge to, to reduce the delays. Okay, all right, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, all right, so in, in, in the next part, I would like to um, have some um, uh, introduction about dynamic signal control. And um, uh, this is actually um, some, um, uh, a CV speed harmonization at the uh, at intersections. So uh, with the uh, with the CV speed harmonization, we can design the vehicle traje tra trajectories and corresponding signal timing, and then we can try to maximize the throughput and driver comfort, minimize energy consumption, and ensure the safety. And so the core problem here is the the, the trajectory planning and scheduling for the CVs. So here I want to use this animation to briefly show the the concept of the to show the concept of the the, the, the speed harmonization for CVs. So this is this is a typical scenario without a speed harmonization. So you can see when we have the vehicles trajectories uh, that when we have the vehicle get approaching to the intersection, then they have to slow down and by the red signal light, then we can cause the, the shock wave, and and then. Uh, even though the, all, all the vehicles have to slow down and, and then the traffic congestion has been uh, created at, the, at this intersection. So they, you can see we have so many shockwaves have been caused by the, the red signal light. But uh, for a parallel scenario with the same uh, uh, traffic demand, and if we can do the uh, CV trajectory control, so we can slow down the, the CV a little bit uh, before the intersection. So then uh, especially for this case, you can see we slow down the CV uh, uh, speed ahead of the intersection. So then we can make sure every single vehicle can get approach to the intersection during the, the green signal light. So then we can completely eliminate the, the stop and go condition for all vehicles. And also we can uh, eliminate the, the impact of the shock wave uh, caused by the red signal light. So this is a, a very ideal case that we assume there's only one lane. Uh, 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 for this in the, for this roadway, and then we can slow down the uh, the entire traffic by uh, maybe a few uh, CVs. But in practice, we can imagine there are maybe uh, multiple lanes, and uh, you can imagine uh, if you are a human driver, you are following a CV, uh, and now you're 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 looking at the signal light is is green, and you, you don't know why the CV is, is slowing down. So you will be frustrated. Then you probably you will choose to to make your make the lane change to pass that CV. So that that would be very possible in practice. So that's why I I, I would refer in this as a as an ideal condition. Uh, but in practice, the, the, the control will be much more complicated. And right now we're 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 working on research to uh, trying to use some machine learning technique to study the behavior of the of the uh, the, the human driving vehicles uh, when when they're they're driving in, in a in a mixed environment that with. Uh, both CVs and human driving vehicles uh, uh, on the road. Uh, what would be the corresponding corresponding following behavior of the of the human driving vehicles when they are following a CV in, in the roadway? And um, this so this is a, a just a, a brief summary about uh, um, uh, the dynamic traffic signal control. Um, 
for the speed combination. And so that includes uh, three different levels, the, the corridor level, the section level, and environmental level. So the environmental level is, refers to the, 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 the traffic condition and, and some, some uh, 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 roadside infrastructure that can provide the data. So then we can, at, in the section level, we can do the adaptive system control to smooth the trajectory of the CVs. And then for, at the corridor level, we can do some signal coordination as well. Um, so by, by, by optimizing the offset and, and in the section, we can provide some dynamic signal coordination based on the, 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 the detected traffic pattern or traffic critical paths uh, to, 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 to facilitate the, uh, the reduction of the delay through the, 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 the entire corridor. Um, okay, so uh, with those uh, uh, key concepts, uh, in, in the last part uh, of, of, the, of the control, and I would like to introduce a, a smart traffic signal control concept. Um, so at, at intersection, um, uh, we, we always have the safety issues, and there are two types of uh, uh, interse intersection crashes that might be happened. The first one is the side angle crash. The second one is the real end crash. So those are the two commonly observed uh, uh, crashes in uh, intersections. And the first type of uh, side angle crash uh, usually will be happened by uh, you have some uh, vehicle try to pass the intersection um, uh, during uh, maybe the, the last minute, last second of the all right time. So then that has a conflict uh, with the, uh, the, the, the through traffic from another approach because we don't clear in the intersection, intersect the area after all right signal. So then we have a conflict between the uh, uh, the, the vehicle from different approaches, so that can cause the side angle crash. So in most of time, this type of sense side angle crash can be prevented by the Dilemma Zone Protection System, DZPS. Um, the second real end crash uh, is happened when you have maybe uh, the leading vehicle try to slow down, but the falling vehicle try to speed up, uh, especially during the, 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 the yellow signal. We, we have ob ob observed many cases because the driver behavior may be different. Some conservative driver, they intend to slow down when they saw the, the signal light is yellow. But some aggressive driver, they, they intend to speed up to pass, pass in the section when, when, when they saw the, the yellow light. So because of these different driver behaviors, so when you have a leading vehicle to be a conservative driver, you have the following vehicle to be aggressive driver. So then that can, we can have a high potential to cause this kind of real end crash. So uh, in some ongoing uh, study, there's a discussion saying that uh, probably the advanced warning system uh, can be, uh, uh, the AWS can be a good solution to prevent a real end crash. So for example, we can uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, ahead of, uh, maybe 300 feet or 400 feet ahead of intersection, we we put a, a, a AWS uh, a light to give the warning to the drivers. So when, when, when the driver are not commuters, when, when they're not familiar with the driver condition, so they, they may follow the AWS. But some later study showing that when people, when, when, when driver get familiar with the, the AWS, so they, then they can tell, okay, when you have the flat, flash start to light on, so that means the, the, the signal light were going to change from green to yellow, maybe after three seconds or after four seconds. So in that case, they, 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 they kind of learn the knowledge. So then they're, they're still, for some aggressive drivers, they're still, still intends to uh, speed up to pass the intersection. So that, that can still cause uh, many potential real end crash. So, the, 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 uh, so, so many existing studies already proved that the AWS would not, be, uh, would not be a good solution to deal with the real, real end crashes. So in, in this uh, uh, research, we are trying to de design a, um, a, a new smart control uh, system. Uh, so that uh, accounts for both intersection safety and the mobility. So the prevention of the real end collision at the intersection is still an unsolved problem as we just discussed. And traffic safety and the mobility are usually implemented with different control devices. And, and that's often competed for the limited uh, available resources. So for example, your for, for the dilemma zone control system, we're using one set of scenarios. For the speed harmonization, we, we're using another set of devices. And so those are usually uh, different uh, control devices. They're, they're, they're competing with, with each other. So integration of the control devices for both operation uh, and, and safety, so as to concurrently achieve the effect, effectiveness on, on these two regards has not been well, 
addressed yet. So that's why in, in this uh, uh, research, we're trying to propose uh, a, smart, a smart signal control uh, system. So that has the capability to uh, concurrently improve the safety and also improve the, uh, the efficiency. So for, for simplicity, uh, this system has two functions. The first one is to provide the dilemma zone protection for, for the vehicles. The second one is to do the uh, speed harmonization and, uh, and, and, and speed coordination control for uh, both connected vehicles and, and the human-driven vehicles. So we, we use HV to stand for the human-driven vehicles. So the general idea is we have the signal light, we have the roadside unit for the communication purpose, and we have a signal controller over here. So then we can have different modules to activate the different function in the system. And we can either do the uh, aura extension or signal plan adjustment. So the aura, aura extension will be for the dilemma zone protection purpose, and signal plan adjustment will be for the, the signal coordination purpose. So, um, so later on, we're going to uh, introduce some, the control module in, in detail, but here is just a, a big picture about what kind of information will be provided. So for example, we can use the verb speed limit sign to provide the guide rate speed for the human driven vehicles. But at the same time, we can send the advisory speed for the connected vehicles through the, the roadside unit. Okay, so this is uh, the, the data flow. Um, so uh, in terms of data sources, we have the microwave sensor, for example, the, the wavetronic radar sensor. So that can be used to detect the location of, the, uh, of, the, the, of all the vehicles on, on, on the roadway. And then we have the roadside unit to provide the, the information of the connected vehicles. And then we have the signal controller that provides the signal control status information. So then, in terms of the data type, we have the, 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 the human-driven vehicle location and the speed uh, uh, captured by the, the, by the microwave, microwave sensor. We have the CV trajectories captured by the RSU. Then we have the signal, signal plan and timing spat information captured by, uh, provided by signal controllers. So then we can activate different uh, control modules here, including the dilemma zone protection, Q evolution, uh, real-time signal control and, and real-end crash prevention. So here, uh, uh, in terms of these four modules, uh, the first module is for safety purpose. The second, QLens estimation is for both safety and mobility purpose, and signal coordination and speed harmonization for mobility purpose, and the last one, real-end crash prevention is for the safety purpose. So in, in, in general, the entire system is designed for both safety and mobility considerations here. Um, so in the, the, in the first module is for the dilemma zone protection. So we aim to predict the vehicle's, vehicle's passing probability at, at, at a few seconds before the, the end of the yellow interval. So then we, by, by predicting that probability, then we can decide um, uh, the required all right extension time based on this equation. So I don't want to go to the detail of those equations, but the general concept is we, we predict the probability of vehicles to pass in the intersection during the, the, the yellow time. So based on that information, then we can uh, you, you use the, based on the location of that vehicle, of, of, of the last vehicle, and also based on the speed of that vehicle, we can uh, uh, calculate the required aura extension time to, to provide the dilemma zone protection. So, so in this study, we, we don't do the yellow time extension because uh, in, in our field test, we, we realized uh, by by provi providing yellow time extension, in some cases you can also fully encourage the, the commuters to, uh, to 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 utilize the, the yellow time to pass in the section because in many cases they, they realize okay if I, I speed up the, the signal will, will always provide the yellow time for me so I I would definitely we would definitely encourage them to 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 uh, to utilize the yellow time to pass in the section. Uh, so in this case, instead of doing the, the yellow time extension, we're doing the aura time extension. Um, so in, in the second module, uh, we're trying to do the QLens estimation. Uh, so because uh, for different type of data, we, we have different uh, uh, level of uh, resolutions. For the human driven vehicles, uh, because we only we, we're, we'll be able to detect the location and speed of the HVs, but we, we really don't know where, which lane are the HVs are traveling? So we just know, okay, the vehicle is over here, but we, we really don't know uh, uh, which lane the vehicle is traveling on. But for the connected vehicles, because of the, the communication technology, we have a much higher 
with resolution of data. So then we know, okay, so this vehicle are specifically traveling on this specific lane. So then we have more detailed information. So, uh, so that's why we have two different type of data from different type of technologies. And so then we have to use the, sorry, we have to use the uh, QLS estimation algorithm to try to fuse these two type of data. So then to estimate the corresponding QLens on each lane of the, of the roadway. And in a, in a certain module, we're doing the signal coordination and, 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 and connected vehicle speed harmonization. So that is actually an extension of the, of the animation I just showed in the previous slide. So we're trying to coordinate the signal control plan, the offset, along with the connected vehicle speed to, so as to achieve the, the better performance for the, for the connected vehicles. And the last module is to uh, prevent a real end crash uh, uh, event in at intersections. So there is actually three sub modules here. So the sub module one, when vehicles are arriving with insufficient side distance, while the intersection has unclear initial queue lens after the onset of the green. So actually, the, the second module, the queue lens estimation, will provide information to support the, the this first sub module in, 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 in this module four, and in the sub module number two. Uh, vehicles are arriving with insufficient side distance while intersection has unclear initial queue after the onset of the red. And the third sub-module is some vehicles within the de detection zone are predicted to be stopping during the yellow and or at time. So then we can give the warning to the following vehicles. Um, so with those um, uh, definitions, we can, so this is a system control logic. So with the signal status, we have yellow and red yellow and red and, and green. So during the yellow and red, we're going to activate uh, 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 these two control objectives for the purpose of improving safety. So we can either do the protective vehicle in the dilemma zone, or we can mitigate the potential real end crashes. And when during the green time, we're going to do the improve of the, of the uh, mobility by promoting the signal pro progression uh, with the signal, uh, dynamic signal uh, uh, offset optimization and also the, the, the CV speed harmonization. So then uh, uh, corresponding uh, to the control actions uh, for the improving uh, of the safety, we're gonna do the aura extension or the advisory speed for safe stop for the vehicles. And for, in, for the improving of the mobility, we're gonna do the advisory speed for progression and also real-time signal coordination. So those control action actually refers to the four modules uh, we just introduced in the previous slide. Uh, okay, so uh, here I would like to quickly show some uh, numerical tests. So we, we pick five intersections at, uh, in the state of Utah, and uh, we got the data from UDOT to calibrate the simulation. And uh, we use, here we use a vision to, to run the, the simulation and, and to implement the proposed uh, uh, smart control system. And so here's the basic scenario is we have uh, about 40% uh, of human-driven vehicle, regular vehicles, uh, complies with the uh, variable speed limit. We have about 10% vehicle to be the, the connected vehicles. And uh, for, the, for the comparison, we com compare the pre-time signal control and the case with the dilemma zone protection system, uh, which include the safety module only and, and also the proposed system with both safety module and mobility modules. Um, so for the safety MOE, we look at the average vehicles trapped in the dilemma zone, average number of potential side angle crashes, and average number of potential real end crashes, and also average number of red, red light running vehicles. And for the safety mobility, we look at the average number of stops and average uh, vehicle delay. And so this is the uh, output of the safety MOE. Um, so in this case, uh, we can see the proposed system can actually outperform both systems in improving the safety performance from different uh, safety MOEs. And the dilemma zone protection system can definitely prevent uh, uh, the potential side angle crash compared with the, the, the no control. And, but uh, in terms of real end crash, the dilemma zone protection system cannot, can, can, can do nothing. Uh, but the proposed system can, can still have a good potential to reduce the potential real end crashes. And also, uh, the, the proposed system can provide some average number of red, red runnings pr by providing the advanced information to the connected vehicles. Um, in terms of the mobility MOEs, uh, if you compare the, the delay and, and number stops, the actually the, the, the dilemma zone protection can actually uh, increase the delay a little, a, little, a little bit because in practice, we can always expect the 
the trade-off between the safety and, 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 and efficiency. So that's why the dilemma zone can uh, somehow increase the delay by doing the uh, aura extension because you're providing more aura time. So you're re reducing the capacity or throughput of infection. So that's why we have a little bit higher delay. But with the proposed system, because of the integration of the speed harm and also the signal coordination, we can also further benefit the mobility at the same time. And um, okay, so the last part, um, uh, uh, we want to do some dis discussion on the role of the government uh, in, uh, in supporting the smart vehicle technologies. So what would be the role of government in, in, in a smart mobility system? So the first one is we, we do nothing. So we just let the operation of, of the AVs, autom autonomous vehicles without connections, and or we can prom promote the CVs. So uh, currently there's a lot of uh, ongoing um, uh, efforts across the country, including a CV pilot program, a CV demonstration uh, a grant uh, funded by USDOT back to a couple of years ago. The Kama platform, uh, the Utah uh, 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 Connected Vehicle Corridor and some standard and reg regulation as well. And also uh, there's uh, some opportunities and also uh, liabilities of, uh, from the government uh, perspective. So for, for the opportunities, we can definitely demonstrate some benefit of CV uh, over the, the AV alone, or we can construct and manage some uh, uh, CV infra infrastructures. But there's also some potential liability of providing uh, CV data for the vehicles. So for example, uh, what if uh, your, 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 your system has been spoofed, uh, has been uh, experienced with some cyber attack, so you are sharing inaccurate information to the vehicles. So then that, that leads to potential crash. So that can also further bring some liability to the government by, by providing the, the data to the vehicles. And also, uh, how about the, some AV or CV driver license? Because uh, with the elim 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 elimination of the drivers, we can probably give some special license for driver maybe with the dis disabilities or some, some, some senior driver as well. So also some uh, in terms of data management from the CV and, and, and AVs because you are using the infrastructure to collect the data. So those are actually some, some roles of we're expecting for, for, the, for the government. And so this is some other ongoing uh, uh, work in, in our lab. So this is a, a, a one tenth uh, a connected automated vehicle we build up in our lab. So that has been, uh, is, it has been integrated with a Kama platform uh, developed by the, the Federal Highway Administration, which is used to support the operation of the connected automated vehicles. So this actually car includes uh, 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 cameras, the LIDARs, and, and also some on onboard computing components over here. So this is a, so, so this is a LIDAR, this, this is a, the, the camera. So we have both cameras on board, so that can detect the, the real-time information, so then we can do the the, 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 the control in, in, in this uh, one test car model. And so this, this is actually a, a, a screenshot of the data uh, processed by the, the, the integration of the LiDAR and the camera. So this is the, the driver environment we, we build up in, in the lab. And, and then this is a, the 3D uh, map that has been constructed by both the LiDAR and, 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 and cameras. So then based on this, this information, we can do the, the corresponding trajectory plan for the for the vehicles, for example, this is uh, the corresponding uh, trajectory of the vehicles based on the, the environment. So the vehicle is originally driving along this way, and then de detect there is some obstruction over here. So then uh, the vehicle decide to uh, uh, um, uh, uh, change the driving direction to to, to 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 this side to avoid the obstructions. So this is some some few tests we have been doing with this one test car in, in the lab. Yeah, so here's a, just some acknowledgement. So uh, the research I'm presenting here is supported by MPC and, and the Federal Highway and USDOT and, 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 and UDOT and, and, and also another uh, uh, national center as well. Um, yeah, that's pretty much everything. And I would be happy to take any uh, other questions. All right, there is one. Um, is speed harmonization for traffic signal progression just a concept, or have some Utah agencies tested it in real life? Um, so currently, it's just a, a concept, but um, actually not in Utah, but in, in Maryland. Um, um, uh, actually, my advisor, uh, my PhD advisor, is a professor in University of Maryland, so they're doing some field tests in Maryland. Uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure about the current status because of the COVID. 
uh, pandemic impact. But uh, so this is a, 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 some concept he he bring to he brought to me and and, and asked me to do some simulation tests. But they are planning to do some field tests in in Maryland. Okay. I I, I brought this idea to you dot once, but they, they they feel like the uh the, the the system is too complicated and it's beyond their the current staff capability to, to carry out the, the field test. So so they're they're a little bit hesitant to to do the testing. So uh, that's why we we're we we're, we're not quite successful to doing the, the field test in Utah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? If anybody has any questions, you can certainly um, go ahead and unmute and ask your questions. Uh, I think we have another question in the chat box. So what is the underlying purpose of this movement toward AVs? Um, so there's a, a lot of, uh, I think the basic uh, um, um, underlying uh, purpose is, uh, uh, it's just like uh, the transition from the, 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 the conventional form to the smartphone back to maybe 10 years ago. Uh, so, so, so nowadays, all, all of those car industry, vehicle industry, they they spend a lot of effort to developing autonomous vehicles because they, they believe uh, the the AVs are more uh, much safer and, and much efficient, much more efficient than the the, the conventional vehicles. So that's why um, um, they, they're they're putting a lot of efforts to developing developing AVs. But from the government side, because we were expecting the appearance of so many AVs on the road, so the government want to also facilitate the research to to see how they can uh, invest uh, in, in, invest some money to build up some infrastructures to support AVs as well. Any other questions related to today's presentation at all? Okay, not seeing any additional questions or hearing anybody on mute to ask their questions. Uh, Dr. Yang, thank you very much for taking your time to share your research with us today and kind of the future of where possibly where you're going to be going with it. Uh, certainly appreciate that. Um, thank you, everybody, for attending today's TLN event. Your feedback is important to us, so please complete the evaluation. Uh, if there are any future topics or ideas that you would like to uh, see TLN deliver, then please identify those in the evaluation as well. And if you do have any potential suggestions or questions on MPC, uh, then by all means, reach out and we'll put you in contact with the, the right people to help you out. With that, I sincerely hope you enjoyed and gained some new knowledge from today's session. And again, I would encourage you to visit our website at translearning.org where you will access the learning management system uh, where we warehouse a pile of training and past presentations. And you can also register for any upcoming events in there as well. With that being said, everybody uh, go wash your hands, be safe, and don't forget to be awesome. Thanks, Terry. Thank you. Bye.